Welcome everyone. Today is our master class. We do this every single month on the first Monday of every month here in Preschool All Stars. Today we're going to be talking about how to make and sell digital and physical materials for your preschool. I'm so excited. I can't wait to bring our two beautiful All Stars on for you to learn from. Uh, first, we're going to be learning from Olivia Rawlinson how to make physical materials for your preschool, things like t-shirts and swag. And then we're going to be joined by Taylor Willem, and she's going to be talking about how to sell and make digital materials for your preschool. Now, here's the kicker. Yes, you can do this on your own. And yes, they're going to bring their wisdom and their golden nuggets to you on how you can go do this on your own. But the best part is, is that Olivia and Taylor actually have their own businesses that can help you. Olivia can help you with physical materials like t-shirts for your preschool swag. She can actually be the one who does that all for you. And Taylor can be the one who can actually create all of your digital materials that you need for your preschool. So I'm super excited to learn on how to make and sell them yourself or whether you uh, learn how you can partner with Olivia and Taylor here so they can do all the work for you. That's what we're going to be learning about tonight. So super excited. And my dear friend, Olivia, you're up first. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for inviting me on. <laughs> well, go so ahead and take it away. All right. So I had a chance to look at a lot of the All-Stars questions about physical material, like what to get, how to get it, how much to get. So I made a list of the, I tried all the questions. I tried to do all the questions. I might have skipped a couple though. So the first question that I saw a lot of was where to buy it. So to get my shirts in, uh, I mostly thought about shirts, but you can get bags and things from Amazon. That's where I get most of my bags. But shirts, I don't typically do Amazon. I will normally, and there's Sorry, there's my son crying for me. Sorry, it's bedtime. <laughs> but um, I get mine from my local craft store most of the time. So I have Michael's where I am, and Michael's has shirts for a decent price. I use Gildan brand most often. But then I saw the question, where are those super duper soft shirts? And so I was like, okay, let me find one of my soft. This is one of my soft ones. That's my logo. <laughs> but um, live a little crafty. But this is a Bella canvas shirt. If you go to a place like Michael's, uh, the shirt is really expensive. Just plain by itself. You'll probably looking at like $12 or $13 for the blank shirt, which is a lot for a blank shirt. Um, so you can go online, but the only issue with online is it's wholesale. So that means you have to buy in bulk. So that's just what I would say with that one. Um, but Gildan shirts are really, really great for making your own shirts. And the kids, I mean, adults, we love, we love the soft, soft shirts, but the kids don't really care. They'll grow out of it in a year anyway. So Gildan's a good brand to go for. And I use um, the Cricut software and I have a Cricut maker cutting machine. Um, if you don't have that, there are other options. One that you can do is going to your local craft store and getting those um, iron on like, I don't know what to call them, letters, and you put all your letters together, that's going to take a long time. And I will suggest, I brought an iron just for this. If you have an iron, go for an old one that's not a steam one. So this one only has steam right here because everywhere there's a hole, if you're making a shirt, it's going to leave a mark on your shirt. So you're going to have to go over it again with a part that has no holes. So I started out using that exact iron and then I got my lovely heat press that's this big. So, and again, no holes because that's the goal. So if you're making your own shirts, that's the thing. Get an iron with no holes. Another option that's not as time consuming is to use this. Um, this is my favorite brand. I've gone through a lot of brands starting, I started really making these shirts in this group two years ago and I've gone through a lot of brands. And this one is definitely my favorite. It has the most longevity, let me see. See if I can get up there. It's Avery T-shirt transfer for dark shirts or dark whatever. You can put it on anything. And um, it helps you put a lot of color into things. But, and this is my, this is like a frenemy here because I was even trying to make an example for today. So I made my shirt with regular HTV vinyl. This is just high temperature vinyl. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do an example with this paper because cool. And this is what my printer did to it. So 
the paper is not the cheapest. And if it messes up, it just makes you go, ah! So I did not try again. I just did regular paper. And if you get the pack, it actually tells you instructions on how to do this. So I just use regular paper as an example of how I printed it out. And then with this, without a cutting machine, you would have to cut it yourself. The paper does have a backing on it. So if you peel the backing off, it's not sticky or anything, but that's what melts onto your shirts. So, or any material that you use. So if you're gonna use a lot of different colors and you want it to be like exactly like yours, you can do it like this, but just know that everything that's not cut is going to be white on your material. So that's something to consider too. I usually do that in addition to using the high temperature vinyl um, with the shirts that I make. If there's a lot, a lot of color in a part, I'll use that. So if you have a cutting machine, maybe use that for a lot of color. And then for like the words that are just a couple of colors, use regular vinyl. That's like my really big tip on like what I've learned in my two years. Um, another question I got a lot of was, Oh, I told you the brand of the soft shirts, right? Bella Canvas. Okay. So the other one is, should I hold inventory? And that is really up to you. Um, I've had people do it both ways. I've had a lot of people who just start their preschool order like 10 shirts or however many shirts you're expecting to have in your first class. And the most common size to order is a 4T and a 5T for our preschool age kiddos. Um, you might want to grab a 3T, you might want to grab a youth small, but most commonly 4Ts and 5Ts can cover most of our kiddos this age. So most popular, I have people get about 10 shirts. Sometimes I'll have people wait until the middle, not middle, like the second month of the school year and see how many kids they have and then get their orders and send it out with um, their supply kit. So that is another option that you could use. And also I've had people just, oh, I have a new student. I want to put another shirt in. Okay. And I'll put that one shirt. So it's really, it's up to you how you want to do inventory. If it were me, I would probably start off with about 10 in the in like the 4T, 5T, just to have that idea. Um, if you want to charge, I haven't had many people tell me they're charging for the shirts that they have. Most of them are just included with registration fee. But if you want to charge, I would say just make a profit. It doesn't have to be a big profit, but if you're going to buy it from someone else and then charge someone, I'd say a couple of dollars, like four or five dollars would be good. But that's not really my expertise. I don't really know. Someone else might have a better idea than me on that one. Um, I saw a question. Mm. Oh, how to ship them. I use USPS. And if you have an account with USPS, you can become a retail seller. I don't know exactly how to do it. Um, but the retail costs are not very expensive for shipping. And it doesn't take a lot of verification to say that you can um, do retail. And the last question I wanted to look at was advertising. And someone asked, how would I advertise this without actually having the physical product in my hand? And I was like, that's a really good question. Um, I thought of two different options. I thought maybe you can advertise and then say, it'll probably be to you within however many days it might take, depending on how long it takes for you to make it or have for you to get it made. And people are usually okay with waiting for custom items. They're not going to be like, oh, I want it tomorrow. They're probably going to say, okay, thanks. Or you can um, advertise for pre-orders. And that's what I would probably do is say, okay, I'm putting an order in on whatever date, only for pre-orders. So if you get your order in by Friday, then you can get your shirt within the next week or two. So that would be another idea for me. Um, that's all I had on my, big, my sheet of paper. 
Uh, I do see a question, how much do I charge? Uh, for my shirts, my toddler and youth, I try to keep it as low as possible with $12 a shirt. Um, that way, your kiddos, you don't have to break the bank for your kiddos to get a shirt. Um, for the adult shirts, it's a little bit more typical and it starts at $19 per shirt. But that is my pricing. And I have an order form, but I'll answer some questions or do what I have to do before I can before I send that link out to you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so let me pin myself one second. Okay, cool. So a couple things that I wanted to add in, and then let's go to a couple questions. So everyone who's on right now on the Zoom, post in the chat the questions that you have that haven't been answered here. Okay, we might be able to answer a couple more. Couple things to think about as far as marketing goes. In our local preschools, I love to give the t-shirts out for free because and not charge my preschool parents for them because I view them as a marketing tool. So every time that kiddo comes to preschool, right, three days a week or so, they're wearing that t-shirt, not, not every day, right? But we would do every first of first class of the month is spirit day. And so they would wear their t-shirt to preschool on the first class of every month. You know, of course they could wear it whenever they want to, but that is exciting for them. So then of course they're going to the grocery store after they're going to the library, they're going to soccer practice, they're going to all these different locations with their t-shirt on because parents aren't going to change them out of it. So it's just more marketing, especially when you go on a field trip and everybody is in their t-shirt at the field trip, right? Easy to recognize everybody. Plus of course, just more marketing, like as parents are walking around with all their kids, because this is a field trip for the kids. Oh, wow. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that there's a preschool, right? So having your biz, uh, business name logo, having your logo on the front is great. Um, do you put anything on the back that you recommend? Um, for the back, I usually do maybe a motto or the website. I yeah. would recommend definitely the website. Yeah, I love <laughs> or, that. Yeah, may as well get the, the money. And I know that some people do um, like a, what do you, a CAPTCHA or something? One of those. Yeah, codes. I did the QR codes at yeah. some point. I had a couple of people order some of those. That yeah. never helped me, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> no one ever scanned my back. I was like, okay, cool. But <laughs> I guess it's kind of weird too. Right. So I don't know if we'd put them on a kid's t-shirt. No. I do feel like that's super weird for like no. parents to be like going up there. Um, but as a t-shirt, so you got the kid's t-shirts, which you said, you don't need them to be super comfy. You know, the kids are going to wear them regardless. Uh, but the adult t-shirts, if you wanted to make your own t-shirts for um, like for a te being a teacher, right? Uh, you could do that too. So um, the next thing I wanted to say is it's not just about t-shirts, um, but also if you wanted to make bags or other swag, the two places I like to buy materials from is Sticker Mule, places uh, for things like stickers, pins, and decals, or discount mugs is where I would buy all of my uh, tote bags or mugs or other things. Now, you might check Amazon versus discount mugs, uh, depending on volume, right? Because maybe you get obviously a better deal. But the cool thing about discount mugs is you can actually just upload your graphic and it will print it itself versus you having to print everything. Um, and then somebody did ask, where do you, how do you get your image? Like, how do you print it? If you're on Canva and you have your logo from Canva, you can download the uh, PNG or whatever um, and then print it or print it directly from Canva. Um, so let's now ask you this question because do you have a local or an online preschool? I have local. I started out online though. Okay. And did you do t-shirts for the online students? I did. Okay. So somebody did ask, like, I get the concept for local because they can walk around and advertise mm -hmm. it. But if you're advertising an online preschool, you know, unless you have a website, I suppose it makes sense. Um, but help everybody understand like the rationale between were you putting them in your online preschool welcome kits and, and how, what was your reception that you got from parents and uh, kids? So it just, it just broadens my horizon. So now it's not just the people who are close to me that see that I have a preschool especially since I'm online, it can be, I can reach people in different states because they have my shirt on and they're like, oh, wait, what, what is this? I've never heard of this before. And I'm like, oh, it's a great preschool. You should try it out. So it just does really help the advertisement go on further than you could have made it happen. That's awesome. That's awesome. Love that. Okay. So here's what we need to do. We need to get everybody realizing that yes, they can go do this themselves. They can learn all about heat transfers and and how to print and download their logo and how to make it look nice instead of pixelated and not blurry um, and how not to mess up the graphics and not waste money. Uh, sure, <laughs> you can do that yourself or we can just 
hire you to do our t-shirts and other swag stuff that we might want for our preschoolers, which I'm going to tell you right now, everyone, I've been recommending Olivia since day one that she <laughs> raised her hand to say, oh, hey, I do t-shirts and we send everybody to Olivia for all the t-shirts. So I'm not going to recommend that you do this on your own. Yes, you have info here to be able to do that, but I'm going to recommend you go chat with Olivia. So where do we send them, Olivia? Is it a big, long link or do we have a short little link? It's a... Uh... It's in the middle link. It's not something <laughs> to remember, unfortunately. I'm sorry. I know you're good. Google form right now. Cool. I'll put it in the chat. And then can you actually uh, Facebook DM me that link as well? Yeah, I'll do that too. Sweet. Yes, I'm working on a website. It's good. It's a really long work in progress. <laughs> awesome. So here's what we're going to do. Obviously, um, we're going to tag Olivia back up at the top of the All Stars group with this link. Make sure you guys can all find her. Um, anytime somebody wants t-shirts, just tag Olivia's name in the All Stars group. That's 100% fine. And of course, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, the link will be in the description. So you can also reach out to Olivia and get her um, to help you with all of your preschool swag. Do you do anything for like other companies or is it specific to preschool or is it just like if you want a t-shirt and you got a logo I help you <laughs> um yeah pretty much if you want a t-shirt if you want anything and you have something I'm going to I can make it right. I actually just made it for like a family reunion someone went climbing a huge mountain in yeah. Wyoming and I made shirts for their whole family so that was really fun that's so. awesome <laughs> yes. awesome all right <laughs> love this love this um okay thank you so much Olivia I really appreciate you being here today um, and we will talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Thanks. All right. We'll see you. Okay, friends. Here's what we're going to do now. Um, now I have a special video from Taylor Willem. She wasn't able to uh, be here live to present today, but she put together a really cool video for you uh, that we're going to be able to share. And uh, then we'll see as uh, she is on for questions. And so we'll be able to get her questions in just a second. Let me go ahead and um, open up her video. There we go and share screen and all that good stuff. All right, so right now, go ahead and enjoy uh, Taylor's video that she made for us. Hi everyone, I'm Taylor and I am here to help you guys hopefully learn a little bit about creating digital content. So firstly, I want to be a teacher forever and it has been a wonderful journey that has led me to teaching online for the past five years, opening my own preschool, teaching hundreds of students, and now helping teachers learn how to do the same. So I feel very blessed for just the road I, how I've gotten here. Quick pause, I'm so sorry. I have to make sure that I'm not pinned so that you guys can actually be able to see her. Apologize about that. Okay, and we will re-begin. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to try my very best real quickly to answer all the questions that I saw posted. One of the things I noticed I saw was about virtual classrooms. I love to start my class when I just say hello to everybody with a virtual classroom that looks like this. Basically, it's a bunch of pictures created in Canva. I could go to depth on it, but it would take a very long time. I could definitely do another training on it, but essentially what it is is opening up in Canva and just pasting in a bunch of pictures. In a little bit, I'll show how to create the links inside these virtual classrooms. I typically do it just to say a quick hello, and then we jump into the next song or into what we're learning for the day. But I also love to send them to students because I think they are just wonderful learning tools. And I think it's a great bonus to offer to your preschool families. So I'll show you another one in just a bit. These are the slides. So I love, 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 love uh, Google Slides because when I first started teaching a few years ago, I spent so much money on props. I had props everywhere, like in buckets, on my desk, everything was covered. And I was always just trying to pull things and show them. And I feel like it got a little bit messy. It was just hard. And I don't feel like it captured attention online the way slides do. I also like slides because they create routine and structure. I follow the same routine as you can see how they're like numbered for every single class. I change them seasonally. I'll change them for occasions. I'll change them just to be fun. I don't have to go and buy more things. I don't have to get, you know, the, Ver the uh, Velcro 
things. What are those called? The Velcro things where you've got to change everything. I don't have to do any of that anymore. And I, I love that. I love that the possibilities are endless. I love it for time management. They keep me on track. Um, lesson planning, I, I stick with these right here. Those are the slides I stick with. And then I just have to remove my middle chunk. And that's the concepts that I'm learning or that I'm teaching them each um, class. So if my beginning chunk is the same and I'm just removing those letters and I'm putting in a new letter every week, I'm putting in a new number, I'm putting in different things. And that saves me just so, so, so much time with um, planning. It used to take me hours where now I can crank out some things in 20, 30 minutes. And young children crave stability and structure. It's really going to help their confidence when they know we're entering class on this virtual classroom. Then we're shaking our sillies out. We're going into how you feel. Then it's calendar time. Now it's our letter time. Now it's our number time. And it's really going to help them understand what's going to come next. And they're going to feel so much more confident inside the classroom. Find ways to interact on each slide. I saw so many questions on how do we keep their attention? How do we hold their attention? Every slide should have multiple ways on pulling your students right back into you. So for this slide, for example, I am asking them, what's the weather outside? It's really pretty, it's eye capturing. And then I'm asking them to do something. Look outside, what does it look like out there? Can you show me on your fingers? So now they're looking outside, they're sharing the weather with me. And now they have to follow directions by showing me which finger uh, represents their weather for the day. And so each student gets to hear their name because I always will say everybody's name. Jacob has sun, partly sunny sun and clouds. Look, Addison has sunny weather. Oh, look, Alex, you're having windy weather. I'm having windy weather too. Kids love to hear their name and it's going to pull them right back in. It also helps confirm that they are following directions and listening to you. They get to interact with each other because if they were all to shout out, um, their weather, it would be really loud. If I were to unmute each student, that would take a very long time. Some of my classes have 12 students. We cannot spend maybe eight minutes that would take to unmute each student and say, my weather is, by the time they unmute, remute, it would just take too long. So they all get to interact with each other. They get a practice following their directions, listening skills, and we all get to hear each other's weather. And I get to do all of this where each student gets an opportunity to participate in easily less than two minutes. Sometimes I can do this slide in one minute um, the longer the students are with you, they have this down. I have many students now where second we get to this slide, they're like four, three, they're showing you right off the bat because they already know what to expect. So that's wonderful as well. I like to do little slides like this. How do you feel? And again, they can show me on their fingers. Sometimes I use numbers, sometimes I use fingers. And those classes that I do have that the time is not as popular and I have three or four students, sometimes I do ask, oh, can you unmute and have, you know, Alex, tell me how you're feeling today. Why are you feeling that way? If I have a student who says, no, oh, number four. Oh my goodness, look, they're sad today. Friends, do you think we could cheer them up? We could cheer Gustavo up. And so they get to hear their name again. And so I love doing little slides like this in the beginning of class. Then once we hop into more of the teaching, I like to make my slides where we can learn multiple um, different ways because everybody is going to learn differently. So this is about teaching the number eight. And so we'll say, we'll ask my friends, can we count this? Will you count these with me? One, two, three, four, all the way until we get to the number eight. This way, they are saying it with me. They're seeing the numbers pop out each time we say a number and they're hearing it. So that's already three different ways that they are learning this material. So it's really going to help the students that do learn in different ways or multiple ways. Class is short. We want the material to stick. I don't do class. I saw some, um, there was a question about how to teach longer than 30 minutes. Personally, again, I've been teaching preschool age children online, completely online for over five years. I've taught thousands of students. I personally think over 30 minutes is too long for them. After class, I do hold show and tell and um, we communicate and talk more, share more. And um, 
that's optional. And I feel like some students share every time. And then I have those students who share sometimes and sometimes it is too long for them and they're ready to go. So personally, I think over 30 minutes is too long, but class is short for me, 30 minutes is short. And so we want that material to stick. So that is why I do it this way. It's also going to engage them. They get to see it, say it, hear it and move with it. From there, I hop into pictures like this and say, now we're gonna jump. Let's jump eight times. One, two, three, four. And we're all jumping around. Um, I will quickly, hopefully hop in and show how I animated these slides. This way they are learning in all of the ways. Again, this is happening in 10 seconds and they're jumping up and they're counting and they're hearing it and they're seeing it and they're moving with it. And it's really just going to help that material stick with. All right, so this is actually one of the virtual classrooms I just sent out to the people who follow my subscription. And so basically this is a virtual classroom and you would send the link to your parents for students and they will get taken to a page that looks like this on their whole screen. And as they click around, it's going to take them to different things. So again, basically this is created inside Canva with a bunch of pictures that are just posted. And then I bring it over to my slides and I just go to, so from here, you would just go to blank and then insert and you would insert the image from however you chose to save it. So here this is, and for the sake of time, so I already have this open. I love this song, it's Jack Hartman, Count to 100, and you would just click the share button and copy it. Then you go back to your virtual class and you select the picture that you want to, um, you want to animate it to. And so then I'm gonna go to insert and link. And now I'm going to copy my link in there and hit apply. Just like that, the link is in there. All my students have to do is click it and it's going to take them to that. So virtual classrooms are great because I do them for the letter A, the number one. And so once we hit that concept, I can send that home and then students are sent a link that essentially looks like this. And all they have to do is have fun clicking around and it's going to take them to different things. And then, you know, I, I'm a sucker for, you know, the read aloud. It'll take them to that. And then all their parents have to do is, you know, let them go play and click. The very hungry cat. And they can have a lot of fun with that. So that is why I love virtual classrooms. Okay, so this is the slide that I showed before with the jumping. So with this, again, is basically just a picture. What I did with this one is I started with a blank screen. I went to insert and I inserted just a picture I found from Google of somebody jumping up in the air throwing leaves. From there, I inserted separately 10 leaves that I had purchased um, the clip art to use. From there, I inserted the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. With those, it obviously didn't look like this. But then what you do is you just click it and you hit add animation. If this is not already open, you would click it, you could double click it and go down to animate. You click animate and it goes over here. And from there you have options. Do you want to, hold on, I just animate a new one for you, add animation. And it tells you, do you want it to fade in? I usually fade in, there's a bunch of options you could do, but as you're starting out, just keep it simple, fade in on click. And that's the way it's going to go. And so as you can see, this is what it looks like after I've done animating all of this entire list right here. But once you're in slideshow, you see it with all the animations because all the animations need to be clicked. So then I one, two, three, and every time you click, a new one will pop up. So animations are very, very simple. It is basically putting a picture into the slide double clicking it to animate it and you will um, animate in whatever order you want things to appear on screen. Okay, so I'm going to try to really quickly show a little bit of how I start a calendar and I will probably have to finish uh, this and just send it out. <laughs> but I basically again have a blank, you know, slide and I'm going to go to my drive and I am going to go to my clip art 
And then again, you can get images from everywhere. I have purchased quite a lot, spent like a thousand, two thousand dollars on it. You can get them from Google. You can get them from Canva. You can get images anywhere. I like to have like little fun ones. So we're entering the month of August. So I kind of want to do like maybe something beachy for the sake of time. As you can see, I have a lot of things I've purchased. I'm going to go, let's go with this pull one because I haven't done that in a long time. So with this, you can do this many ways. You can insert the image or you can make the image your entire background. And then from there, you're just going to start inserting things. So I'm going to add in a text. And I'm going to write August. I'm going to highlight it and let's turn it white and make it bold and make it a little bit more fun. And let's see. And it literally with slides, I feel like it's a lot of just playing around. Like I just decided to take the bold off. I think it looks better that way. And then, you know, it's just gonna be a lot of moving things around, adding things in. I know slides can seem so intimidating. Honestly, they were to me. I was even just reluctant to like want to learn them. Um, but it's just a lot of practicing, a lot of taking time. I know it does take a lot of time and a lot of money, which is why I have created my subscription for teachers, just because I felt if I could eliminate some of that guesswork and some of that expense of how much I spent making slides, then I would love to do that. And I could take some of the time off of teachers' plates and help them while also creating income, which then supports my clip art habit because it has gotten quite expensive, but I love it because I think it's beautiful and fun to have in the classes. So again, with this, I will probably finish up this calendar and send it out separately because there's just absolutely no way I could stick the time and uh, create it for you. But that's basically how it is. Blank screen, add in an image, add in another image. Do I want to animate it? Do I want to make it bigger, smaller? What do I want to do with this? It's a ton of playing around. I hope that makes sense. So because I know that a lot of this is actually what held me up, making the slides and figuring out all the ins and outs and just the cost of it all, this put me about a year behind. And again, I didn't want that to happen to other teachers, which is why I created the Taylor's Teaching Tools subscription. Just started last month, and this is basically month one of the resources I have given. I've put in two videos and worksheets. That way they can put those videos into their classes. It's less teaching time and worksheets and digital activities. So for this example is worksheets that they get, a digital activity that they get to send to students, and then teaching slides that they do not have to create. All they have to do is open up and teach their students. That way this is basically a lesson just already done. Here's a digital activity for your students. Here's some worksheets that go along with it. And here's the teaching material for you to do with your students. I've done um, shape ones that I'm finishing up and it's basically the same way. Here is a Google slide, instructions on every single slide, worksheets that go with it, a video and lesson that they can either send that lesson um, as a resource, they could upload that lesson and that's an extra class for their students. They in person could press play and then also a digital activity that goes along with it. So a bunch of just like little things like that. And then because um, again, I know how hard worksheets and digital assignments and slides are, I've created those as well. So I, so I really wanted to put everything into this because I know how hard it is. And when I look back at the five years, um, it took a lot to get me here. And so that's why I just wanted to help out other teachers by offering this subscription. And I hope that this class helps you guys and help you learn something. And if you want the guesswork taken away from you, I am here to help. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Awesome. Was that not amazing? Okay, let me pin myself again. So Taylor, first off, let me just see if Taylor is on really quick. Um, I see Mrs. Taylor, so I'm going to see if that's you. Go ahead and unmute if that's you, Ms. Taylor Willem. Is that you, girl? Yeah. <laughs> hey, awesome. Are you oh. in a place where you might be able to answer a couple questions? Yeah, practice. We got home, no traffic, everything somehow worked out magically. I probably didn't even have to record all that.
<laughs> and the whole time I was staring at it, like I look like a pirate because you could only see one of my earrings. And I was like, they're one, these right here. I love them. And the whole time I was just staring at myself talking with one earring, like you look like a damn pirate. <laughs> All I thought, that whole video. Right now. Okay, well, we Hi. were thinking a lot of other things, like, dang, that's a lot of really good information. <laughs> so I forgot to clarify. Now, this is, of course, how to create digital materials. Um, obviously, you've taught, you know, thousands of students online, five years. You are the master. And I love what you said. You created the subscription because it helps you to fund your clip art habit <laughs> when we did taxes and my husband saw how much I spent like there were no words yeah like, <laughs> no words so here's what I'd like to do everyone go ahead and post if there's a, a question that she hasn't answered yet post in the chat any um questions and don't worry everyone um we're gonna get you that link and in fact I'm gonna get you that link right now give me one second here while I pull it up there we go and of course, I will also be putting this link in the description of the YouTube video. So don't forget that. Uh, let me pull this up really quick here. There we go. Okay. So the link is going to be here in the chat as well as obviously in the description. And I think I have to put the HTTP, make that clickable. There we go. Okay, great. So put any questions that you have in the chat and then we're gonna ask Taylor in just a second, but here's what I need everybody to know. Um, She's been around the block. She knows how difficult this is to create on your own. So yes, she taught you how to go create your own like clickable, really cool things, you know, digital classrooms and virtual classrooms, you know, that you can make. And clearly there's a way to make these. Um, but also, do we do we really want to do that? <laughs> That's the other kicker, right? Like, <laughs> I think I would love to have that. But quite frankly, I don't want to put the time in to do that. I would love to uh, just pay, what is it, seven bucks a week? for your virtual, for your subscription to be able to have access to Taylor's resources. That's what I would actually prefer. So um, um, on the, I find it's really hard, at least for me, I have kids running around. My husband's out of town Monday through Friday, and I'm also teaching like eight live classes. So I find personally, it's really hard to make the digital things and create and teach and do all the things. So a lot of the stuff I put out there has been like years in the making people like, how did you do that? I'm like, I made it. And then like six months later, I fixed it. And then six months later, I fixed it. And then I had some more time and I fixed it. It's been, um, it's like I said, that it's been a journey. It hasn't been like, I woke up and made this. So I don't want that to discourage anyone. Like anybody could do it. It just is time consuming. Um, at one point I was like, I'll learn how to make this clip art. You know, I don't, <laughs> I'll stop buying it. <laughs> please. I gave my kids my iPad. I was like, if you watch this YouTube tutorial and you download this app, you can learn how to make it. I'll pay you. Like you could do it. No, no. <laughs> I told him so many times, like you want to be eight years old. You want to make some money. Right. Um, they learn things on the computer like that compared to me. I'm like, get going. So I'm still waiting for that to happen. <laughs> like it's a magically start mass producing clip art because it's so expensive. And the person I've probably spent at least a thousand of it has gone to her. It's just beautiful. And she's always recreating more stuff. And I'm like, damn it. Yeah. And I'm keep buying it. Um, but it's beautiful. I can't oh, I hear you. Anyone knows how to do it. <laughs> totally. And so I want to clarify really quick. You did mention you can go to Google and bring in Google images. I'm going to tell you everyone right now on the video, don't do that. Um, strictly for the reason that you don't want any copyright claims coming after you. So yes, you do need to buy any clip art that you use if it's whether from Canva or whether you go buy some really cool clip art in these different, you know, places you can buy clip art, um, or dang, I think seven bucks a week is probably going to be way, you can't even buy clip and art for, for that. The clip art I purchased, it's for classroom use. So then on all that clip art, I had to also purchase the extended license right. to even be able to offer it. I'm like, yes. I already bought this. I know. I purchased the extended licenses, I promise. Totally. And what I love too about your um, subscription is that it's been tried and tested by thousands of students so that you know it works, you know it's engaging. I mean, that's the number one question we get is how do we keep preschoolers engaged online? Like you need to be able to, and, and you've done it and you've tested it and you've refined it. So like, isn't that a blessing for us to be able to just jump into something that's proven and tested? I love that. Yeah, I do look back at some of those first slides and they are horrifying for me. <laughs> I'm like, that's why I had nine students. 
<laughs> okay, couple questions, and then we'll go, then we're gonna go into something really quick. On the subscription, um, it says, "Do you teach us how to do it as well as the virtual slides?" And my guess is you're just giving them the content. You're not teaching them how to I'm go create content. Actually, doing both. Oh. Um, so what I have done is I have told the people who signed up in the order that they signed up, I will ask a question and on like what do, what do you want me to train you so the first person had set a calendar and then so i now have two calendar trainings in there um one that is um just like real pictures i guess ones that's clip art and then i am going to go to the next person now and say what would you like a training on and i figure that way you know if you know 10 minutes a night they want to try to start learning because that is how i started i just did a few minutes here a few minutes there and i just kept doing it so i do um do a few trainings on how to make it just because it will come in handy especially if they want to edit any of the things i do send them oh that's perfect okay love that so we're definitely on for 30 minutes a week um now i know this question might not be asked but i have to ask it because we have to get the full scope of what they're able to do with your pre-recorded videos and etc. So let me ask you this. Can somebody effectively create a brand new preschool called Butterflies Preschool, create their hub and their website like we love to do? And um, yeah. And then basically just and if they take add off, more stuff. Yeah. And if they take off and obviously they're better at marketing than I am. <laughs> Um, yeah, I get like I said, I give them the classes so far in there. There are four pre recorded videos that is a lesson and it's basically like for them to do a welcome and then there's my lesson and then there's like um, a scavenger hunt activity that they after they play my lesson, then they're going to say, okay, that was so fun. We saw so many triangles. Okay, you have 30 seconds go find a triangle and they'll press play and their students might run. They come back with like the craziest things. Now I have some parents that help because kids have brought back some awful <laughs> stuff. Um, but yeah, that's all in there to use in their class. I am a very big believer of like, there's so much out there. There's so much abundance and there's a jillion children. So I have my local area, you have your local area. If you are advertising online and you're doing a better job than I am, then great. The only thing I probably would not want is for someone to maybe put them like all on YouTube where are things like that. Cause so far I do and have only sold to preschool all-stars. Um, I have never branched out further than that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so quick clarification. We're not gonna stick any for content, you know, where it's available to everybody. It still needs to be contained within your paying students, all right? Okay, cool. Um, Deanne asks, is it, are the backgrounds editable or uh, so she can kind of alter them or is it here is what it is or do we get access to the Canva editable file? Um, most of them I make in Google Slides just because I'm so much more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And some of the beginning stuff, the backgrounds are not editable because before I didn't pre, I did not purchase the extended license. She still allowed me to sell, but she, I could not make it to where the things could move around yeah, where so. now I can, which saves me so much time. I should have paid for it in the first place. Um, but yeah. And then I feel like I should probably do a training like soon where I learn along the way of tips and tricks on how to edit a background when someone does not want you to edit the background. Cause there have been a couple of times I purchased something and I wanted to edit it. And I'm like, ew, they made it to where I can't do this. And so I figured out how. <laughs> yeah. So I could do a training on that too. Love that. Love that. Um, to clarify, there's a couple of questions about Google and Creative Commons licensing. So let me clarify. When I said, don't go search Google and pull images off of Google, what I meant was don't go to google.com and type in something like leaves and go click on images and then download any image of a leaf that you see that can get you in red, red, that can get you in bad stuff. I don't know what the phrase is. <laughs> don't do that. Um, however, if you're going through like Google slides and then there's like insert you know, I don't know, maybe there's a different route I've never touched. If there is cool, go that way, but do not go to google.com, click on images and just go start downloading stuff. That's not cool. And also, also yes, Tiffany, you can look up Creative Commons licenses, uh, which just basically means like clip art from like a way back when or people who've offered it to be Creative Commons means that anybody can download it, but typically those aren't very cute. So just forewarning it, it looks like, you know, 1980s uh, black and white clip art <laughs> stuff. So. Cool. Let's do this. Um, everybody, there's two links we're going to be getting you. 
one of the links, um, and I'll tag again in the All Stars group about this link. The link, of course, is to go um, be able to sign up for her subscription, seven bucks a week, um, to be able to get access to her amazing digital materials. The second link we're going to give you is a um, slide, Google slide that she actually created for you, like a freebie and stuff. So you can go check it out. Um, and I'll have both of those links in the YouTube description. Anything else you want to share, Taylor? Um, I can look through the questions on things I miss. I know I didn't touch a lot on like selling it probably just because I am still figuring it out myself. Um, that's probably it. I don't know. I'm sleep <laughs> no worries. No worries. Well, if it took you, you know, a couple thousand dollars to acquire all the clip art, five years to acquire the knowledge and the know how to get it to this point to be able to sell it. We might still have a couple of months or years. People need to get into this before they go sell their own. So good point. <laughs> Awesome. Go sign up for Taylor's yep. subscription. Go sign up for Olivia's t-shirts and swag and all the good stuff. And Taylor, you're awesome. Thanks so much for being here. All righty. Okay. So let's go ahead now. And um, okay. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. So those of you who are joining us on YouTube, this is our preschool all-stars monthly masterclass. We do it on Zoom where we can go do breakout rooms. So I'm going to pause this recording for that. Uh, we would love to have you in Preschool All-Stars. Go to preschoolallstars.com, preschoolallstars.com to be able to get in on the next opening. All right, so Lori, go ahead and unmute. And I'd love to hear what you found valuable in your breakout room. Got it. Um, all three of us, let me see. Second. All three of us were doing um, online preschool. So we didn't necessarily see the the vision for the shirts um, because we don't physically see the children in person, but we could use that concept in maybe the bag that um, carries their supplies. If we send out a welcome kit, we could do it in a personalized bag. And even then you could put their name on it as, as well as your logo if you wanted to, if you're doing individual letters. Um, but we got more out of the digital um, because that would be useful online with the background. Uh, the virtual classroom fascinates me, um, how to have different links go to different places, and it gives the children the time to expand their knowledge. So we like that. Love that. Perfect. Thank you, Lori. Okay, let's go ahead now with um, LIL. I'm not sure who this is, but you are up. Cute. Hi, it's, for, it's Lil. Can you hear me? Hey, Lil, good to see you. Yeah, Lil for Lillian. So Lil. Oh, I love that. Um, I was very blessed to have Taylor in my group. <laughs> and Ooh. I asked her, uh, you know, about her digital, you know, the August. Um, my niche is languages. Um, not only, well, I'm Spanish. I'm a Spanish teacher is what I've been doing. You know, want to be a kindergarten teacher, but God kept opening doors because I'm bilingual into Spanish. It's what I've done most of my life. And I have a friend who teaches Russian and she left the school last year and I left this year. So we wanna do our own language. Um, we wanna do an academy because it's not just for preschool. We wanna do, I wanna do for adults, the elderly as well. Mm. And um, so she was telling me how you can take, I can um, get her graphics and change it, you know, from August to Agosto. And then my friend can do it in Russian. Like, cause I, one thing I want in our program is have the same background, teach the same lesson, but and have the same resources. So that's great that I know that I could take that, um, you know, her graphics and put them, translate them to my language and, and or to Russian or to whatever else. As we grow, I want it to do, I want to do different languages. But right now it's just going to be Spanish, English, and Russian <laughs> are going to be the three languages that we're trying to oh, get going. That's amazing. I mean, even two languages and now you're on to three. Fabulous. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And can you imagine the time saved that this will help you out, right? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for sharing. You're welcome. Right. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, next up, Taryn. Thank you for sharing. Oh, absolutely. So I was with Angelique and uh, we're both starting our preschools this year. Angelique is doing hers in person and it's coming along nicely and I'm doing mine online. And we both talked about how we can use the visual, um, the online classroom or the virtual classroom for when we're absent or things like that, the virtual field trips, the Spanish classes, um, and kind of use that with the hub. And we talked about moving into um, the shirts and things. Um, 
soon. It just both, you know, starting this year, it's kind of a lot going on. But we did think about that as like when we're not able to, because I will be teaching live, even though I'm online, but um, when I can't teach is using that virtual classroom a lot or getting them in, used to being engaged that way. I love that. Good idea. And I also love that it's like dedicated links. Like you click here, you go straight to the video. You know, you don't have to search for anything. So I love that. Cool. Awesome. All right, Paula, you are up next. Hey. Um, something that we talked about, I, I was with Rhonda and um, we didn't, we, we talked about what we were supposed to, I guess, but <laughs> We got off the tangent uh, to marketing. And she said that one of the things that she did was to sponsor, uh, I believe she said it was a softball team. Um, so she had her logo on their shirts. So I thought that was a really good idea. Absolutely. Yeah, I've seen, I mean, you look at any uh, baseball, basketball, and you see like all the gazillion logos, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. cool. Nice, thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. Awesome. Okay, friends, thank you so much, everybody, for sharing. Again, on YouTube, if you're watching this, and if you haven't joined Preschool All-Stars yet, go over to preschoolallstars.com so you can be able to uh, join in on this amazing goodness. Every single month, we do a monthly masterclass. We'd love to have you as well. Uh, we usually do them on Zoom, so you can go out to breakout rooms, get to know your sisters, and really just start collaborating, and we'd love to have you. Well, again, thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, All-Stars, for being here. And we'll see you next week for Monday Motivation. All right, everybody. We'll see you then.